Okay, I admit it, I'm a mathaholic. <laughs> my, um, my teenage daughter, Mariah, suffers the most from my fascination. <laughs> I see math everywhere in the world and feel a profound sense of reverence. We talk about math at the dinner table and she gets excited, but she kind of resists because her friends at school make fun of her. I remember the first time I felt this profound awe of math. I was working on a calculus problem. Did you know that when you branch uh, pipes, there's an optimal angle that maximizes the flow of fluid. The textbook mentioned that this optimal angle occurs in our circulatory system. I remember looking at the blood vessels in my arm and thinking, that is so cool. <laughs> I developed a profound sense of reverence of, for creation that day and began to see the world differently. As I thought deeply about simple things, I began to see with new eyes. Um, as I began to look for math in my world, I made amazing connections. Did you know that the best place to view an angle is related to the best place to kick a conversion in rugby? And that if you construct a dynamic uh, geometry construction of this point, it traces out a hyperbola that you can paint on a practice field. Have you ever wondered why plants grow the way they do? You can model plant growth with a fractal by keeping the scaling angle fixed and varying the, uh, the scaling factor fixed and varying the angle or vice versa. If you fix the angle to 120 degrees, the branches converge when they're scaled by the golden ratio. That's really cool. The talus at the bottom of a cliff piles up to form an angle of repose determined by many things, the size of the granules and so on. Did you know that table salt has an angle of repose of 30 degrees? If you pour salt on various shapes, it piles up to form ridge lines. These ridge lines meet at a well-known point of concurrency in a triangle. Did you know that you can create all of the conic sections, the parabola, hyperbola, and ellipse with piles of salt? If you draw a straight line figure, you can fold it flat so that one scissor cut will completely cut the figure out of the paper. The mathematics of origami is creating more efficient ways to fold maps. And amazingly, origami is related to salt piles. You can look at the bicycle tracks and determine which direction the bike went and which is the front and the back tire. The animation on the bottom left shows that the back wheel traces out a tractrix curve when the front wheel follows a straight line. If you speak in a megaphone, the sound waves are interfere with each other and cause distortion. Paul Voigt patented a more efficient microphone by revolving a tractrix curve around an axis. Did you know that mud cracks differently depending on how it dries? When water recedes, the mud cracks forming nine degree patterns. But if it evaporates all at once, the sequential uh, evaporation causes equal tension in all directions, creating 120 degree cracks. When three ropes uh, with equal forces go through the vertices of a triangle, the knot stabilizes at the Steiner point, uh, uh, the Fermat point, which minimizes the sum of the distance to all three vertices, causing a Steiner path. We see these in soap bubbles. Despite the wonder and awe that my personal investigations give me, they mean nothing to me if I keep them to myself. My grandpa, who herded sheep in the wilderness, taught me that although nature is beautiful, uh, people are more important than things. Uh, William Thurston said it best regarding mathematics. The real satisfaction for mathematics is in learning from others and sharing with others. We have a great math department at my high school. These are my peeps. They understand my passion. I can't tell you how many times I've run across the hall to share a cool discovery or talk about how to help a student. Um, this year I formed a math teacher circle and we work on really cool problems and learn from each other. In 2012, I started a math camp for high school students. We get 20 students that come to Park City for a week and we work on really cool math problems and they get to hear from really passionate and famous mathematicians. Tom Garrity is well known for the great Pi E debate. Art Benjamin is a math magician and well known for his lectures on the joy of mathematics and the great courses videos. Martin Brideson said, it's not hard being the most famous mathematician from the Isle of Man when you're the only mathematician from the Isle of Man. <laughs> These guys have spoken to us also. In fact, John Urschel, if you're in the audience, I'll give you my phone number and you can speak to my kids if you come to Park City this summer. <laughs> to your presentation. 
Despite my uh, valiant efforts to help my students see the beauty of math, my own daughter, Mariah, resorted to the practical application of math in my classroom. I just finished teaching what I thought was my best lesson on supply and demand, and I asked the students if they could explain in their own words. After a long pause, I called my daughter, Mariah, and she said, when there's a high demand for a product and not a lot of it, the prices go up. I said, great, can anybody give an example? Again, after a long pause, I called my daughter, Mariah, and she said, sure, Dad. My first answer was free, but my next one's going to cost you. 